Hello, 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 and uh, welcome back to the Chin Up Show. This is Season 2, Episode 2. My name is Kenneth Chin, and I warmly welcome all of you on behalf of my team and I. We are so glad that you could join us uh, now. Uh, some of you uh, have uh, commented uh, very positively uh, the episode one that kicked off uh, season two last Thursday. Uh, thank you very much for your comments, for your encouragement. It was a long show, uh, mainly because the updates, uh, you know, were just... I think, I think the updates itself took about an hour uh, because we were off uh, for two and a half months thereabouts. And there were just so many things to uh, say to you. So, um, today, uh, episode two, uh, I'm going to start uh, by giving you uh, the last week's uh, updates uh, till uh, today. And I want to say that I forgot uh, to tell you last week, um, because it was updates all the way to uh, September, right? Uh, and I forgot to say, many of you know it already, but I forgot to say, that Pastor David and Pastor Cat just recently became parents. Uh, parents of their firstborn son, James Born Yao. No, no, just James Yao. And uh, he was born on the 10th of September. It was funny because I was already uh, in London uh, and uh, we were talking about, uh, you know, when uh, the date of de delivery, when the due date would be. And I think Kat was saying something like, I hope it comes, uh, the baby will come out uh, on the 10th. Uh, I think the due date was 13th. Uh, Pastor Dave was very cute. He said, oh, I hope it, uh, the baby comes early because uh, I have a wedding, <laughs> the first wedding uh, from X London, the first wedding in London uh, that Dave would officiate. Uh, and of course, we were joking about the last time he was here for Tiong's wedding back in KL. He said, Pastor, I was watching you from start to finish because I wanted to do everything that you were doing uh, for the wedding that I have to conduct, he said. So, uh, it, it was definitely uh, better that the baby came earlier so that Dave would have a couple of days at least uh, to acclimatize you know, and to uh, get a little bit of uh, rest. Uh, before that day came. Uh, so anyway, uh, I said to Dave, uh, you know, my wedding anniversary uh, was on the 9th of September. That's when uh, Sandra and I celebrated 29 uh, years of marriage. Uh, so I said, hey, be nice, huh? 9th of, <laughs> 9th of September. And Dave said, yeah, maybe, you know. Uh, but uh, he said, Cat is hoping 10th. So, but the fact is, uh, by the 9th, we were still in Germany uh, and uh, we heard as we were about to take our flight uh, home to KL, uh, we heard that uh, Kat, uh, her water bag had broken and she uh, was on her way uh, to the hospital. And that was the ninth evening, uh, uh, evening, night. Uh, I can't quite remember the detail. But so, you know, in a way, uh, baby... Uh, was ready on the 9th uh, and came out on the 10th and uh, everyone uh, was happy uh, and baby uh, is well, mom is well, uh, Dave uh, is telling us that he's not slept, uh, you know, very much, you know, well, welcome, uh, I guess, uh, to uh, uh, new parenthood uh, and uh, it's all good, it's all good. So, uh, from uh, the Global Church, uh, from X Church Global, uh, once again, Dave and Kat, uh, we wish you, uh, you know, uh, God's uh, blessing and God's best and God's refreshing and renewal and rest. Uh, and may the Lord grant you both strength and may the Lord continue to bless baby, baby James. Uh, may the Lord continue to, you know, touch him and heal him of any uh, uh, challenges that he might face. I know he, he faced a little, a little challenge here and there uh, with his health uh, in the first uh, 10 days to two weeks. Uh, but in the name of Jesus, James, you shall be well. Uh, and the whole family uh, is blessed. Amen? Amen? So congratulations once again. All right, let me jump into uh, just this last uh, one week. 27th of September, we had the GVT meeting. What's that? The Global Vision Team. 
uh, consists of uh, uh, a number of uh, church plant coordinators uh, from the global church. Uh, so we have uh, Pastor Dave there, Pastor Lazarus there, uh, we have Pastor Joel there, uh, we have uh, Pastor Kajin there, uh, and of course the team from here in Malaysia, myself, my wife, um, Elvin, uh, Rose, uh, and Kenya, uh, and uh, who else? Did I miss anybody else? Uh, I think uh, that's about it, yeah? Uh, and uh, of course, our global church is much bigger than that, uh, and there are more pastors, more leaders, but uh, we just felt like we should just put together a team uh, of more senior ones uh, who could help uh, you know, uh, pave the way uh, for all the other churches uh, to follow suit. Okay? So we had a really, really good meeting. Father Sandra had a lot to say uh, to the leaders, and I also uh, took uh, maybe about five minutes to share very quickly that uh, next week, the SPO Vision Retreat is next week. I think it starts on the Monday, 7th of uh, October. I'm just looking uh, behind to Shirley, who's giving me sign languages now. Uh, and um, 7th, 7th of October, I'm saying that uh, to ask that you pray for us because it's an important time, very, very important time to download from God, uh, you know, to be led by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and this time around, God has not only just given me a theme and a direction for next year, 2025, has given me a direction, a theme for the next five years, uh, leading to 2030. That's why we need him. We need to be sensitive to his voice. Uh, and so I told the GVT, the Global Vision team, that uh, I'll be sharing. Uh, and uh, I gave them a little bit of a foretaste, especially of the first letter uh, to the word dream. Uh, so I am going to be sharing about dream. And the first letter is D, uh, which stands for discipleship. And I really sense God's leading uh, for all of us to go deeper even uh, in the coming year when it comes to discipleship uh, because that's God's way uh, of uh, transforming the world. So uh, that was uh, that. Uh, Friday evening, uh, we had a really good time uh, of catching up fellowship and also passing uh, down uh, things that we have um, received from the Lord. The 28th of September was a Saturday and in the morning, most of the men uh, of uh, Acts Church, well, I, I can't say most of the men, uh, uh, but quite a few of the men uh, of uh, Acts Church uh, was at uh, a sports arena uh, there in uh, USJ uh, and we had the Acts Men Sports Day and it was good. We had uh, futsal, we had dodgeball, which I think is a violent sport. <laughs> uh, uh, some guys can really throw very hard, no? Uh, and uh, if you're not careful, you might miss Father's Day altogether. Uh, and, um, and, 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 and then there was basketball. And then there was badminton. Uh, so, you know, the guys were really uh, sweating away. But most importantly, having good fun, having a time of bonding. And I was able to also, you know, catch up with different ones and ask them how they were and uh, dig in deeper into, you know, what they do. And so it was, it, it was a good time. Uh, and uh, other men, you know, were doing other sports, you know, like eating uh, and sleeping, uh, you know, and spending time with family. And that's okay. That's okay. Uh, we forgive them. Uh, on the 29th of September, uh, Sunday, okay, big, big day because we had our worship at homes. What's that? That's like a fire drill uh, that X Church has annually. Fire drill meaning that if anything happens in Malaysia that stops the church from meeting like we do, okay, we don't want to take things for granted. We don't want to, uh, you know, uh, um, be uh, so uh, proud to think that uh, nothing will change, right? Uh, so we always just want to be ready, like a fire drill. Uh, we don't hope for fire to come but we do a drill anyway, just in case. And so worship at homes is a fire drill to us. And uh, we recorded more people coming to all the homes in totality, the homes that became worship centers last Sunday, recorded all together a bigger number than people who ordinarily come to our Sunday worship services. If I ex-quote the morning, 
uh, recorded that. We recorded 143 people that came for uh, the homes that turned into worship centres last Sunday. 143, no double counts. Sometimes we double count because we have two worship services on a Sunday and sometimes, you know, some people stay back uh, for the second worship service uh, and sometimes when we count, you know, actually we double count about 10 to 12, maybe 15 people who stay back to serve. And so sometimes when, when we say, oh, 170 people uh, came, uh, maybe only 145 uh, people came, that kind of thing, 155 people came. Uh, um, uh, so this time around, no double counts, 143, a lot of new people, probably about 10 uh, new people were recorded. And so this works, really, really works. Uh, and uh, we had more people serving, of course, right? Because if you had to break up your worship uh, services into, let's say, seven homes or nine homes. Um, you know, more people have to stand up, rise up to chair, uh, to lead in worship, uh, to preach the word, uh, to do hospitality. Uh, we had three guys in uh, KK8 uh, and 1. KK8 and KK1 uh, combined. Uh, that's the homes I go to with my wife. Uh, and um, uh, we combined uh, to become one worship center in, in, in Kota Kamuning, uh, more specifically in a house in Tropicana. And uh, there were three men outside, uh, you know, being like uh, not just security, but uh, traffic uh, control, uh, traffic wardens, three men uh, outside just making sure that cars were parked, uh, you know, correctly, properly, so that the neighbours uh, will not be upset with us. So, you know, when you have, you have fire drills like that, you must also uh, think about parking. Uh, because if persecution ever happened and we went to the homes instead, right, uh, we don't wanna, we don't upset the neighbors, <laughs> all right. So even parking properly uh, is important. All right. Now in the evening of the same day, uh, last Sunday, the 29th of September, we were very very honored and happy uh, to be part of Pastor Gloria's house blessing. Uh, what's the difference between a house blessing and house dedication? Only if you own something you can dedicate it. I have a baby, I want to dedicate my baby. You cannot dedicate your neighbor's baby, you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, it has to be yours. So, if you have your own house, you can dedicate your house. Lord, it's mine, I give it to you. Uh, if it's not your house, then we bless it. So as long as you're living in it, it is blessed. Now, we're not sure uh, who the next tenant will be. And if they don't live uh, for the Lord, if they live... Uh, in a way that is bad and evil and wicked. Uh, and, uh, and then, you know, for sure the house won't be blessed anymore. Uh, uh, the blessing will follow us. The peace will follow uh, the last tenant, you know, that blessed it. So uh, I hope you understand that. And, and so uh, Pastor Gloria and her sister, Sonia, uh, had uh, rented a beautiful space uh, in, um, you know, in, in, in PJ somewhere. I don't want to say the exact place. Uh, but uh, it was funny because as I was driving uh, to the place, I kept saying, this is not the road to Cheras. This is not the road to Cheras. And I told uh, Pastor Gloria there, I said, Gloria, you know, uh, uh, even before I left the house, I was thinking, hey, how long will it take us to go to Cheras? Uh? And uh, my wife said, actually, I didn't say Cheras, so my wife said, oh, about an hour. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, correct, correct. It takes about an hour to go to Cheras. And then uh, when I got into the car, I said, mm, I wonder where we're eating after the house blessing. Where, where is Gloria taking us to eat uh, in Cheras? Then my wife, after a while, kind of like, hey, it's not Cheras lah. It's, you know, uh, somewhere uh, near PJ. And I said, huh? Really? And as I'm driving, I'm still wondering, why am I driving away from Cheras, you know? And so Gloria said, Pastor, I was born there. I lived there all my life. And, uh, you know, I'm now a pastor for ex Cheras, And so, you know, me and Cheras are one. And so I don't uh, uh, blame you, pastor, for thinking, Gloria Cheras, Gloria Cheras, Gloria Cheras. And so anyway, uh, I think it's a new beginning. It's a new day uh, for Gloria and Sonia. It's a beautiful space. Uh, they can actually see greenery. You know, when I walk into the house, I open the door, I thought, because they, they opened the, the, the door, the sliding door to their balcony. And I, I, so the first thing I saw was what I saw outside the balcony and it was just a forest. And it was like a big painting uh, of greens. And this is what Gloria said. Uh, Sonia also said this. 
can you imagine, Pastor, this is what we see every day when we come back home. As soon as we open the door, whether we are tired, whether we are sad, uh, whether uh, you know, it's been a tough day or not, we, we come back to greens and oxygen <laughs> and uh, they breathe easier. So, uh, well done and congratulations to you, Gloria and Sonia, uh, for uh, you know, uh, being able to acquire or rather rent uh, such a nice space. And of course, we spent about, I think, a good 20 minutes just talking about uh, the journey of finding the place. And it had God's fingerprints all over it. God is good. And he gave uh, to Gloria and Sonia such a blessing. And it was our blessing to bless uh, the place. And now it's filled with the presence of God. God is there and God will bless them, protect them, provide for them. Amen. Thank you, Gloria and Sonia, for the privilege. All right, let's jump now to 1st October. Can you imagine we're already in October? Okay, uh, and uh, Tuesday. Monday is my day off uh, with my wife. We have our Mondays. And Pastor Sandra and I, where did we go to? Uh? Uh, Monday, Monday, Monday. We went to cut our hair, you can see. Uh, yeah, so I, don- I donated my hair uh, to the salon. And uh, we ate at... Uh, oh, this time around, we ate at Dome. Yeah. Dome, sometimes we go, sometimes we don't. Uh, it all depends on our feeling. So that day we felt uh, like we wanted to eat some kind of pie, like, you know, uh, something Western. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I heard something funny, you know, that day I went into Instagram. I saw this guy. He was like a preacher, uh, and, but he preached in Malay. Uh, and so he said, you know, uh, you know, some of our people, uh, you know, they like Western. No, they like Western. They like English, English, England, England. But yeah, they don't know how to even order. You know, they go to the shop and the waiter said, uh, Sir, what can I get you? Oh, give me chicken chop and please the, make the lamb uh, as soft as possible. Give me chicken chop and make the lamb as soft as possible. Hello, they. Chicken chop is chicken chop, lah, not lamb. Anyway, we, I laugh, lah, you know, I laugh. Oh, please give me chicken chop and make the lamb softer. Okay. So, um, Western, lah, we also ate Western, lah, dome, lah. We ate this pie. And uh, I didn't take photo, lah. Usually I take photo. And call it Monday and celebrate it. At night, uh, uh, where did we go? <coughs> uh, at night, we ate something. Uh, uh, can't remember, uh, but it was like two Mondays. Uh, two uh, dates on the Monday. All right. So anyway, uh, Pastor Sandra and I had a good time uh, on Monday. Tuesday, uh, my day was packed. Uh, I woke up again at 4 o'clock in the morning to do my quiet time. Pastor Sandra woke up at the same time at 4 o'clock to bake for the teacher's of Victory Academy because every Tuesday morning, 7.45, it's the Overcomers Breakfast Devotion. We call the teachers of Victory Academy Overcomers because really they are. And uh, they, they're such champions for the school. And we love them. So Pastor Sandra baked and uh, we left the house late. We were so late, 6.05 uh, in the morning. Uh, usually we leave at 5.55. And by 6.05, I uh, don't know why there's so many cars already on the road. Thank God not jam. La. It's not traffic jam. La. But it was just a, a lot of cars. And uh, so I thought, I thought to myself, I, I had this theory uh, that the traffic condition changes every two to three months in Malaysia uh, within five minutes. So once upon a time, you know, you were able to go out at 6.45, no problem. Then it became 6.40, then 6, uh, you know, 6.35, 6.30, 6.25, you know what I'm trying to say? So now, 5.55, we're leaving the house and it's all cool. But I think another two more months, we probably have to leave at 5.50. Everybody's trying to beat everybody like, you know, five minutes before. You know, Yay! You know, the early bird catches the worm. All right? Uh, and uh, so uh, that's, that's a traffic condition in Malaysia. Uh, you know, you can comment uh, if uh, you think you agree with me or you don't. Uh, but there you go. I think cars shouldn't be too cheap or so, lah. Uh, otherwise, there's just so many yeah. of them on the roads. Uh, but then if you don't make it cheap, so then how are the younger ones going to afford? So I don't know, like, maybe the younger ones are. Uh, or maybe we should just you know, get better like, at our public transportation, like Singapore. Uh, I think the Malaysian government is trying, like, uh, trying, trying. But still, there's one thing about you know, having all our... Uh, well, suddenly I go into uh, transportation. You know, I'm supposed to give you updates today. Uh, but okay... So uh, the LRT stations are quite far from you know different places and to actually get near to your house. So at the end of the day, while the LRT stations and MRT stations are being built, the real problem is how to get from your house to the LRT station. 
And then if you have a car and you get to the LRT station, there's no parking. Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah, it's tough. Lah. It's tough. Lah. I won't want to be the government. Lah. I won't want to be the transport minister. But you know what? Sami Velu ah, did well. No. Hey, no, he wasn't transport minister. Was he transport minister? No, lah. he was uh, roadworks. Ah, don't play a fool. Uh, roadworks. Okay. Um, so, Tuesday was a full day. VA Overcomers Breakfast Devotion was a great time. I shared the devotion um, that morning. And I believe we had a really, really good time uh, with uh, physical food and spiritual food. Then, uh, it was an important meeting that I was a part of. Uh, Dr. Jill, uh, who is the field coordinator for Lynette's. Lynette's is our organization for suicide prevention and mental, mental health care. Um, there is a uh, yayasan, there is a foundation uh, that is interested uh, to give Lynette's a grant. Uh, and of course, hundreds of people are, are looking for a grant from the same uh, foundation. So it's a very tedious process that they have to go through. Interviews after interviews and after interviews. Uh, most times, you don't even get through the first. Uh, meaning that you don't even get called for the first interview. Uh, but by the grace of God, we have already been called for two interviews now. Uh, one level after the other. And Dr. Jill is doing a great job answering the questions, preparing for the slides, you know, uh, the deck uh, and all that. Uh, and, you know, it's one thing about answering things just from your head. But Dr. Jill is the type that answers from her head and from her heart uh, because she's very passionate about uh, suicide prevention, mental health care, passionate about Lynette's. Uh, and uh, so uh, I thank God that she has both the heart and the head because uh, when we share the heart, uh, you know, the people who are interviewing us, uh, in the first interview itself, you, you could see how God moved their hearts. And they shared their own experiences about themselves either, you know, once upon a time, you know, thinking about suicide or they have a friend uh, or a colleague or even um, a classmate uh, who tried to take their life or even one uh, took uh, her life uh, because of exams, you know. And so it touched a heartstring. Uh, it touched a chord. Uh, and, uh, you know, just the just inspiration behind why we're doing what we're doing, I think everybody understood it. Uh, but now they're going into details. Uh, they're going into numbers now. They're going into data now. They're going into, uh, you know, uh, legalities now. Uh, like if you're going to go into the schools, have you gotten the green light from uh, the Ministry of Education, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, Dr. Jill knew all this by her fingertips, right? And she invited uh, a few of us, myself included, uh, as uh, the chairman of uh, Lynette's. Uh, I shared my story at the first meeting. You know, uh, I was given 10 minutes to do that. And this time around, uh, there was only 10 minutes for Jill uh, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, give the update of our, um, uh, our proposal. Uh, and then 10 minutes for them to ask questions. 20 minutes, that's it. And so the rest of us uh, under the Lynette's umbrella didn't want to say anything, just gave Jill the whole uh, 10 minutes and she did a really, really good job. And by the grace of God, God will supply financially uh, to Lynette so that we can do so much more. There are thousands and thousands of schools, uh, just talking about schools, uh, not even universities yet, uh, thousands of schools in Malaysia that really need help and hope. Uh, and tens of thousands of students, yeah? Uh, that need what Lynette's have to offer, okay, which is awareness, education, um, uh, encouragement, examples, inspiration uh, to live and to choose life, uh, especially when life might sometimes seem unfair. All right, keep choosing life, choose to live because life is precious. All right, so uh, that was a success, and now we're just going to wait for the Yayasan, the uh, foundation, to get back to us. Uh, we had staff uh, breakfast and uh, it was really, really delicious. We had lontong. Okay, those of you who don't understand that, it's delicious. Okay, just trust me. Uh, and uh, then there was also, I think there was nasi lemak. Was it nasi lemak? Yeah. And so the staff ate to their heart's content. Then we had devotion and uh, De- uh, Pastor Daniel and team led in that. And it was a good time. Uh, then finally, to close the day, I had a very, very fruitful Victory Academy management meeting. Uh, we continue to talk about finances because it's quite important now uh, that we are able to make ends meet uh, to see VA survive 
uh, and uh, prayerfully thrive to be a great school. It's already a great school. Internally, we are all together and uh, we are excited about uh, the school, excited about the students. Uh, but, you know, you still have to uh, balance the books. You still have to pay the bills. And so we call it a social business because it is still a business, but we are doing it with a heart, not just for profit, uh, but for people, young people especially, okay? So that was o October the first Tuesday, and then uh, I, I went into Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday morning, which, which was just yesterday, I, I went for a medical checkup and consultation uh, in the morning, and by God's grace, it is uh, a very good report. Praise the Lord for that, uh, except that I have to watch out for a few things. Uh, the first thing the doctor is asking me to do is drink more water. I think she repeated that 10 times. Excuse me. Huh? Okay, doctor. Hope you're happy. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. I must drink more water. Uh, she says, your kidneys are still good. Uh, they're still healthy, but drink more water. I can see from the report that not enough water. Okay, cool. Uh, and uh, less salt. Less salt. You know, uh, for people like me uh, who eat out 99% of the time. Huh? And even when I eat in also in my house, uh, it's Maggie Mee, right? So, the, 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 no, no, I'm just kidding. It's not always Maggie Mee. Huh? Okay, just nine out of 10 times only. But, uh, but uh, it's salt. Lah. Okay, it's salt. So, we must be careful. Huh? Careful about the salt and also careful about, careful about the sugar. Now, the sugar one uh, is one of those things, you know, I need God's help. Lah, because I'm a sweet tooth man. All right? I'm sweet. Lah, what to do? Okay? All right? Uh, and uh, just, just have to be careful lah, uh, about that. All right? Uh, for me, uh, when I go to a buffet, uh, the deciding factor of the buffet uh, is the dessert table. All right? Uh, I don't care. Like, you know, you can have crabs and you can have prawns and you can have lobster. Does it excite me at all? Why you beef or why me beef? You know, uh, uh, it, it's, you know, the desserts, man. Uh, the desserts. And if I could just pay for the desserts, that's it. But I, I've got to change. Uh, I'm 54 and uh, if I want to live a little bit longer and, 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 know, and see God's blessing on X Church and AYA and see God's revival come upon Malaysia, then you know, may the Lord give me a little bit more time uh, to see all of that come to pass. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, oh, I, I, they found out that I was vitamin D insufficient. Not deficient, but insufficient. And so I had to go and buy vitamin D. Lah, all right, D. Um, and uh, thank God it's not expensive. Lah. Uh, you can buy vitamin D. Actually, vitamin D is very important. It's important for your lungs. It's important for your uh, skin. It's important just, just even for energy. And if your vitamin D increases, your energy increases. Uh, and uh, so, uh, of course, she said, the doctor said, uh, hey, just go out in the sun. Lah. Go out in the sun. Five, ten minutes old, enough already. You know? But, you know, in rainy season, uh, uh, the sun is not there. You know? I mean, it's there, but it's not there. Lah. Uh, but uh, she says, yeah, just go out. And have five ten minutes, um, and uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a good good uh, good advice. So in the morning it was all that, uh, and then uh, I uh, came back uh, to the office and had a really really good uh, catch up with Pastor Matt. Uh, he's one of my huddle one leaders. He's uh, he's a good guy. Uh, he's uh, I think an awesome young working adults pastor. Uh, in fact, we were talking about that also, you know, uh, do I see him ever, uh, you know, releasing that role? And if I do see him releasing that role, what, what next do I see him do? And then we talked about the possibilities and uh, potential. But I said, uh, Matt, I think at least, you know, one, two years more uh, before you release this because you're doing a good job and you, you probably should also spend this time uh, rubbing off on uh, the next guy that you think is uh, suitable, all right? So uh, it was a really, really good meeting. And uh, Pastor Matt shared with me a dream that he had. And uh, I didn't know how, how to interpret it uh, at first. But as we continued talking, uh, I was able to, yeah, uh, uh, you know, just give some little bit of insight into what I think that dream could be. Uh, it's very, 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 very encouraging. Uh, and in the middle of, uh, you know, uh, our meal, uh, we uh, saw... Um, Pastor Stephen and uh, Pastor Edward uh, coming to the same uh, restaurant. And I thought, hey, you know, it's cool, you know, to see uh, Pastor Edward from uh, Penang. Uh, 
the floorball man. You know, they call him the floorball uh, man. And uh, so it was good because I, I haven't seen him for some time. And uh, I think he was uh, meeting uh, Stephen to recruit him for uh, the next uh, floorball. Uh, no, I don't think so. Lah. Uh, because uh, Pastor Stephen can't play for floorball even if you even if you paid him to do it. Um, uh, no, I, I think Pastor Stephen used to play floorball. He used to be very good. Now, you know, he's grown fatter. You know, uh, he's uh, lost his stamina. No, I'm just kidding. He's just behind the screen. So, you know, I like to just uh, pull his leg. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, I think Pastor Edward was there uh, to yeah catch up. I, 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 I'm sure uh, Pastor Stephen will give me an update uh, sometime. But um, uh, yeah, it was a good, good uh, lunch. And it was good to uh, chance upon uh, a, a friend. Yeah, uh, a pastor friend from uh, Penang. Hey, um, so what else did we have? Uh, oh, yeah, I had a, a quick meeting with two staff, two managers from Help University because they came to uh, my office uh, hearing that I had interest uh, in uh, recommending the Masters of Education, M. Ed, Masters of Education, to some of our leaders who are interested. So, um, yeah, so uh, three or four of uh, my own uh, leaders came into that room for a meeting. And the reason why, like Pastor Sarah, Pastor Sarah, who is head of X Kids and head of Little Legends, um, she, she was really interested to do the Masters of Education, even since two years ago, at least, I mean, it could have been longer, but at least two years ago, she told me, uh, you know, Pastor, I've been thinking about this. But the reason why a lot of our pastors uh, uh, find it very difficult to uh, take up any of these courses is because they are probably one of the busiest people on the face of the planet. Okay, if, even if you had night classes, they also have got night things. They, they, they meet up with people at night. They counsel people at night. They catch up with people at night. They have meetings at night. They have Bible study at night. They have prayer at night. Uh, you know, um, they have homes at night uh, uh, and, um, and almost, you know, a few nights a week. Uh, and then if you say, yeah, but don't worry, Pastor Kenneth, which is, which is what the, one of the staff from uh, HELP said, don't worry, Pastor Kenneth, good news. It's not on weekdays, it's on weekends, you know. <laughs> and I looked at the, the, the person and said, welcome to my world. Our weekends are even busier than our weekdays. Uh, and he said, oh, really? Uh, then he said, uh, uh, it's, it's Saturday and Sunday. I said, you know, that's why. That's why uh, our people have found it so, so difficult. Now, I don't say this out of pride that, you know, we are so busy. You know, No, no, no. It's just, you know, we love to serve the Lord. And we love people. And uh, we, we use up, you know, the time that we have for uh, productive, conducive um, things that, you know, uh, are aligned, in alignment with our calling. Uh, it's not that we set out to be busy. It's just that uh, life is full of meetups and catch-ups and bless-ups. And uh, yeah, everything except give up, you know. Uh, so yeah, you know, sometimes our, our people are encouraged to take a break, take a rest. But yeah, coming back to studies, yeah. So anyway, uh, four of them are interested, okay. So I did say that uh, you probably... Uh, will not find this uh, opportunity where four, four of you can do this course together. And so if three of you have to miss that weekend, uh, at least one can attend. Uh, and uh, they said that uh, their teaching will also be recorded. So that, uh, and, and, and most of it, I think maybe 60-70% is online. Uh, so I think they're, they're trying to make it uh, easier. Uh, and for those of you who are listening uh, to this podcast, um, if you really want to do a good uh, master's in education or master's in other areas, uh, master's in business administration, blah, 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 uh, this is the right time to join help. Uh, I know, uh, you know, I shouldn't sound like I'm giving advertisement, but these guys at help are really, really nice. They're really, really good. They're very, very, very helpful. Uh, I myself am doing my doctor, uh, doctorate in business administration with help. And uh, they have good people. Uh, Dr. Go uh, being uh, one of the best of, 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 of the lot and he's a good friend. And uh, so uh, help, uh, uh, their quality, uh, their quality is uh, uh, unquestionable. Uh, but uh, I think they want to make it available, accessible 
So they've brought down uh, the at, at least the masters of education. The the fee, the entire fee is ten thousand ringgit, and they told me that even the public universities uh, may not be able to match that. Uh, and I think they're right. I think they're right. Uh, so uh, most of these MBAs or uh, masters will start anywhere from fourteen thousand to maybe even twenty thousand. So uh, ten thousand, two year program. Um, and uh, online mainly, uh, and weekends. Uh, Saturdays more than Sundays. Um, so consider it, yeah. And uh, help if you're listening to this. Uh, just know that uh, you know you guys are are really um, special in my eyes, and I, I love what you guys do. And if you are loving what I'm doing, then remember to give me a discount. <laughs> and I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, okay. Um, then finally, uh, yesterday, uh, I had the XKKSPO meeting. And that was also a really, really good uh, time. Uh, all the uh, leaders there, uh, online, Zoom call. Uh, we had it for about one hour, 45 minutes. Uh, I've uh, passed on the uh, mantle uh, to Pastor Daniel. He now is the CPC, the church plant coordinator for XKK. And we had a really, really good discussion, uh, good decisions being made. Uh, and we're looking forward uh, to the days ahead. Okay, so that's all the updates uh, for uh, today. And uh, remember, please, to pray for us uh, for the SPO Vision Retreat next week, okay? We're going to start on Monday and on Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, all right? Pray with us, pray for us. It's going to be good. It's going to be God, God time, all right? Because where the SPO is led, the whole church, not only in Malaysia, but uh, the rest of the world, yeah? All our ex-church family in 11 countries now. I think we have about 55 churches uh, in 11 countries. A lot to do. So uh, big uh, responsibilities on our shoulder, but the Lord's grace is sufficient. Amen. His mercies are new every morning. It is He who is the Lord of ex-church. He leads us. He guides us. He has brought us thus far. All glory to Him. And all glory continues to go to Him in Jesus' name. Right now, this is the uh, end of uh, the updates. Uh, but uh, as we go into a break, uh, we will come back with uh, Tumpang Tanya Pastor or TTP. See you soon. something okay welcome back and welcome to the segment called tumpang tanya pastor today's question is how do you recognize or identify talent and what do you do to encourage or develop it as a leader or person who invests into the lives of young people okay thank you for that question and of course you can keep the questions coming and i'll try by the grace of god to answer as many of them as possible. So today, uh, I think it's a kind of a three-in-one question. So how do you recognize or identify talent? Let me just actually use these two words, recognize. Now, how do you recognize a person? Well, you've seen that person before. Uh, and that's how you recognize. You've seen it. You've seen it. Hey, isn't that Elvin? Hey, isn't that Aaron? Hey, isn't that Shirley? You, you've seen. This is not your first time. So this is how you recognize talent. How? You have seen it in yourself. You have seen it in yourself. Uh, so uh, when people come into my life, maybe for the first time, uh, and uh, they're they they doing something around in and uh, well, they're doing something around me, uh, and um, and uh, you know either they're working for me or not, part time not. Okay, uh, I recognize something I've seen before because I actually see a little bit of myself in that person. That's number one. Number two, how do you then identify that talent? Recognize is one thing. <gasps> I've seen it before. Identify is to ask that person to show it. So if a police stops uh, a person uh, and you wind down your window and, um, and the police says, show me some identity. Okay? Show me your driver's license, your IC. Uh, so how do you identify talent? 
uh, you, you, you ask or you create opportunity for the person to show it. Okay? So what, again, you recognize by having seen it. I, I, I think I've seen this before. Okay? And most of the time, you've seen it in yourself or you've seen it in others. And that's why you recognize there is that talent. And then you ask that person or you give that person opportunity to show it. All right? And then it says, how, uh, what do you do to encourage? The word encourage, I underlined it. Uh, you got to say it. You got to speak it. You got to say, uh, Alex, uh, I recognize that you have such a passion. Uh, I, 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 I see that, you know, the, the work that you do um, really shows that you not only have a passion, but a, a real uh, knack and a real niche uh, for this. Uh, you say it, you speak. That's how you encourage. Most of the time, uh, people don't encourage, they don't say it. They don't say, hey, Stephen, I, I see that you're really good with students. I see that when you speak to students, you know, they listen. I see, you, you know, you got to say it. And many times we don't say it. Like how the wife will say, you never said you love me. And the husband say, hey, you know, 13 years ago when I married you, you know, at the altar, you know, I said, I love you. Uh, and, and she's like, no, you got to say it again and again. And, say, I know. and then your children are not, not, not hearing you say, you're awesome. You're, you're the best son I, I, you know, I could ever ask for. You're the, you're the most beautiful daughter I could ever imagine. You got to say it. And say it more often than not. Uh, encourage, all right? Uh, but another way to encourage is to give people opportunity. Yeah? To serve, to... Uh, 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 you know, to put their hands to the plow, get their hands dirty. Uh, it could start small, but it should grow. Uh, give them the responsibility. Uh, because as that person is getting responsibility, he's not only, or she's not only getting responsibility, they're getting the chance or the opportunity uh, not only to be encouraged uh, continuously in that area, but to develop it. So, on the job training is the best way to develop a person. Not just books, not just classroom, uh, not just theory, uh, but practice and practical. All right? I really believe in on-the-job training. We do that all the time here in X and AYA. Uh, and I've done it for years. I believe in it. I believe in putting people at the deep end. Okay? Uh, then you say, oh, how if they drown? Listen, uh, sinking and drowning is two different things. All right? Jesus allowed Peter to sink but he did not allow Peter to drown. Okay? And sinking is sometimes part and parcel of walking on water. Just get out of your boat and start walking. And sometimes you might sink and Jesus was close enough. So as a leader, let that person walk on water. Give him opportunity on the job training and allow him to sink, but don't allow him to drown. Very, very important. So, Show that young person in the deep end, but be close enough to draw him out of the water. You with me? This is very, very important. So, uh, how you recognize? You got to see it. You got to be able to spot it. And usually, you know it from your own self or from your dealings with people around you. You recognize it. Number two, show it. Prove it. Ask the person, give me identity. Give me your IC. Give me your driver's license. Show me. Okay? I'm going to give you the opportunity to show me. Say it, speak it, all right? Continue to confess because life and death are in the power of the tongue. Encourage, all right, by speaking it and by allowing opportunity for the person to start, all right? So I might even say start it, <laughs> all right? Encourage by allowing the person to start something. And then on the job uh, training with feedback, please. Don't just give the person training uh, and oh, just drop him uh, at, the, at the dangerous side uh, of town, but uh, be close enough and always give constructive feedback. Feedback is very, very important. I know some of us don't have it all the time, uh, but we should have it. And if you are the type that, uh, you know, are not receiving feedback or not receiving evaluation, then maybe have some thick skin and ask. Uh, ask your leader, actually, how am I doing? Uh, how, how, how has my work been this last one month? Uh, send reports, send updates. Uh, let the person, maybe the, your leader above you is quite busy with a lot of other things, you know, uh, and while he or she loves you, uh, they sometimes might miss out on the feedback. They go like, oh, uh, I think Aaron is doing okay. Uh, yeah, he looks like he's okay, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, got Chinese girlfriend should be okay. And, uh, and, and, and uh, you think he's all right. Uh, but maybe, you know, struggling, struggling. So uh, over lunch, 
uh, Aaron should say, hey, uh, Pastor Elvin, uh, actually, how do you think my work is? Uh? Uh, this last thing that I just did, you know, is it okay? Can I improve? You know, so, so sometimes it can be both ways. But uh, on the job training without feedback, without evaluation is really injustice. It's really incomplete. Uh, so that's uh, the way I would like to answer this question, okay? And the goal is uh, to see the best of that person developed. See the best of that person drawn out uh, for the glory of God. Uh, good leaders uh, make other people better. Good leaders make other people better. All right? Uh, so praise God for that. Uh, that's, uh, that's it for Tumbang Tanya Pastor. And I'm uh, going to go into my next segment, which is talking about, you know, my relationship with Pastor Sandra, how we met, etc. Come back. Hello and welcome back. Uh, this segment is uh, quite personal to me and I hope quite fun to all of us uh, as I talk about uh, my relationship with my wife, how we met, etc, etc. And of course, uh, I told the team here earlier that they could chip in uh, anytime they want to uh, with a question or with uh, an observation. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I grew up uh, in a broken family and uh, when I was six years old, my... Uh, Auntie uh, teased me, all right? Uh, and it, it was just, you know, uh, just harmless. Uh, so I thought. Uh, and uh, she said, you know, uh, one day uh, when you have, uh, you know, your own wife or something like that, uh, you understand. I was six years old. And I said, no, I will not have a wife. And uh, she said, oh, you will fall in love. And I said, no, I will never fall in love. And uh, so uh, I held on to my six-year-old vow, which I didn't even know it was a vow, but I was so adamant, maybe even stubborn, that uh, I didn't have a girlfriend, uh, a real true girlfriend until Pastor Sandra. Uh, so uh, there were probably one or two girls that liked me. Uh, one of the girls was my neighbor, a Malay girl who wrote me a letter. And uh, oh no, the first one was actually a Chinese girl back in Hicks Road. Uh, Changkat Bukit Bintang near Sungai Wang uh, and to cross the road to give me the letter she was hit by a car uh, and uh, thank God she didn't die uh, but that's what love does to you uh, love can kill uh, and, uh, and thank God you know those days uh, cars didn't, didn't speed along uh, you know uh, busy uh, housing areas uh, he hit her she flew about five feet to the front and then she got up with the letter in her hand uh, I think she was more embarrassed than anything else and uh, she came and she gave the letter to my sister who is two years older than me, Lynette. And uh, my sister said, hey, Kenny, this is for you. So I read it and it was just so girly uh, and uh, I couldn't understand it. I, I think I was uh, maybe about uh, eight or nine and uh, there was like, you know, uh, you know, flower kind of sticker and heart sticker. And I think those days... Uh, they even put uh, something nice smelling, you know. So, so if you smell the letter, I think she put powder on it. Uh, those days, no perfume uh, in that sense. Uh. Uh, so, she, I think she put powder. And then my sister said, oh, wow, I got powder also, man. Your letter. Uh, and uh, I said, hey, what do I do uh, with these kind of things? Uh, because I was really trying my best not to like any girl. I didn't want to break that vow. And so, my sister wrote the letter. And my sister's handwriting was so good. She was so good with her words. I think she made that girl fall in love with me even more. Uh, but it was her letter to that girl and I, I, you know, I thank God I moved. Lah. I thank God I moved because I just, you know, just glee, you know, that just, oh, girls, oh no. And uh, then I went to uh, Jalan Yat Kuan Singh, uh, Lorong Yat Kuan Singh, and there was a Malay girl, a very pretty Malay, Malay girl opposite. Also give me a letter. I, these girls all start with letter one, I think. Huh? And, um, and uh, so, uh, I think you're cute, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and uh, so I was 12, she was 12, uh, and uh, we started what we call a relationship. Uh, I don't know what we started. I, I just said, oh, I have a girlfriend opposite the road, but I never met her after that. I never went out for drinks with her, nothing. Uh, because again, I wanted to stay away. I wanted to keep this vow. And then uh, later on, uh, there was another girl that liked me in school, uh, and she's another Malay girl. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, I try to stay away. 
Uh, also, another very cute uh, Malay girl uh, in uh, Skola Aminuddin Baki, you know. Uh, and uh, I met her a couple of years later and she's, you know, asking whether I want to get married with her. Uh, uh, you know, but, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, uh, then, uh, as I grew older, went to church, uh, there was uh, about two or three girls uh, that uh, thought I was worth, uh, you know, uh, worth the wink. <laughs> worth the, hey, hey, worth the wink. And, um, Again, uh, I didn't know why I, I didn't uh, proceed, except that when I look hindsight, it was this vow, this vow that uh, I, I was going to remain single all my life, okay? So the one that really took my attention was uh, my wife, Sandra. Uh, she was a worship leader uh, at FGA. I was at FGA. And every time I looked at her, now not, not only was she beautiful to look at, uh, but I think more importantly, I was drawn to her spirit. Uh, she was a woman after God's own heart. Uh, she was a great worship leader, probably the best worship leader, and I'm biased, huh? uh, best worship leader in FGA. People loved her. In fact, some people wanted to follow her out of FGA when we were about to start a church. Uh, no, where are you going, Sandra? I want to follow your worship. It's so good. Every time I come for your worship uh, uh, leading, uh, you know, my life changes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, actually, a lot of the guys say that as well. Uh, but we're not sure whether it's her worship or, you know, uh, something else. Uh. Uh, and uh, so um, I, I, I started to have a liking uh, for Sandra and uh, I was praying about it and I heard the Lord say to me surrender Sandra on the altar you know like a sacrifice surrender surrender I, I think God really just wanted me to surrender lah. okay whether it was altar or not lah, just surrender uh, and I did so I did so uh, and Sandra, because she's so pretty, uh, uh, many guys were after her, okay? I had to take ticket like from the bank, you know? Uh, no, just kidding. Uh, just to line up. Uh, and uh, there was one guy after another guy after another guy. And I think she went out with one or two. Uh, and uh, what happened was, uh, in the midst of my prayer, uh, asking the Lord, you know, whether and when should be the right time, uh, I, I, yeah, continue to surrender her to the altar. Or on the altar. And, and uh, so one time, Pastor Sandra actually, you know, because I think Pastor Sandra thought I was a good friend, right? Good friend. Huh? Friends. You know, friend? Friends. Let's just be friends. <laughs> okay. I throw this pen in your face. Okay. Slap your eyeballs with my socks. Okay. No. So, that's how my friend used to say, you know, hey, don't play a fool with me. I slap your eyeballs with my socks. And you, uh, I, I used to go like, What? My eyeballs with your socks. Okay. Um, uh, and that guy became a really, really good pastor in Singapore. Uh, the same guy who said, the same guy who said, slap your eyeballs with your socks. Okay. And if you're watching it, you know who you are, okay? All right. Uh, and uh, so, uh, I want to, my, my wife, uh, then of course, my friend, uh, wanted to introduce her guy friend to me. You know? And so he says, oh, uh, so and so, uh, uh, meet uh, my friend. Kenneth. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I, I put up my hand to shake his hand and in my spirit was, you know, like, may the best man win. You know, but I didn't say it. I didn't say it. You know? Uh, actually, I should have said may God's man win, no? And uh, so anyway, uh, my wife went out with this guy for a bit. Maybe, I don't know, maybe went on for two, three years. Um, and I prayed. I prayed. And every time my heart felt like, ah, you know, Look like, you know, she's looking at other guys and, and, and she's got other boyfriends and blah, 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 uh, you know. And the Lord kept, every time on my knees, uh, the Lord just says, hey, surrender her on the altar. And one thing about living sacrifices uh, is that they keep moving. Uh. <laughs> you know, that's why they should be killed, put on the altar. But you can't kill the woman that you love, right? So, 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 so living sacrifice, keep moving, keep moving. I keep having to put her back. Uh, and uh, you know what God really, 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 really wanted to do with me and I believe with many other men and women out there is just surrender. Not yours. Is. Sandra doesn't belong to me. Belongs to him. That's why Adam had to be put to sleep. Then Eve was made. Um, I think men are hunters, right? They are, they are pursuers, right? 
So they would have so many things to say when God created Eve. So please go to sleep. Men, sleep just means rest in the Lord. Trust in God. God knows. Now I was already ready uh, to be a celibate. No? I was already ready to go on with this single. I had a vow. But you know, something happened. In fact, I had to deal with that. I had to say, Lord, I've never liked any girl. And I don't know why I'm liking this girl. I don't even really know Sandra. And God told me one day, right? Kenneth, whether or not you end up with Sandra or not is not my first concern. Wow. Sometimes you think that when you're praying for a woman, putting her on the altar, all that, uh, it's like you're the, the, the final answer you uh, need from God is, go ahead, marry her. And actually, he's trying to say to me, that is not the most important thing to him. I'm like, what? He says, Kenneth, you have a vow you made at six years old that is unhealthy and unglorifying to me. That vow needs to be broken whether you end up with Sandra or not. I'm just using Sandra and causing you all kinds of feelings so that you can deal with this more important area. That vow had to be broken. I cried. You know, I cried. I cried not because of Sandra that day. I cried because, of, yes, Lord, you see my heart. You see this vow is my bondage. And it's not about God saying, break the vow so you can marry. No. Marry or not is not his highest priority. Jesus wasn't married, huh? except to the church. He's not his highest priority. His highest priority is our health, our spiritual health, our minds. Is it broken through from all the things that inhibits? That's, that's what God's really after. A healthier you. A, a person that's free. A person that's alive by the truth that sets you free. Amen? So remaining single, being married, second, secondary to God. Are you healthy? Are you happy? Are you filled with God's joy and being thankful and all that, you know? So I cried. I cried my eyeballs out, right? Uh, I was really like, God, you see me. You know me. Yes, I thank you for Sandra, but I guess you're just using her as something that will get me to this place where you really want me to be. You with me? So this was important. And then finally, when all that was broken, I asked God again. Now, listen, uh, the journey of praying for Sandra was three to three and a half years. That's how long. And in that, God had a lot to deal with me. Again, she's not mine and she will never fully be mine. She will always be the Lord's. And that's why even married 29 years, I still have to respect her, you know? Because she's not just my wife, my property. She's God's daughter. And when you mess around with God's daughter, you mess around with God, right? So you've got to catch that. Because a lot of husbands, after a while, treat their wives without respect. You know, never say thank you. Never say please. You know, it's just, it just uh, familiarity breeds contempt. Remember who she is. She's firstly God's daughter. She's on loan to you from the father who owns her. And if you can see each other like that, she sees me also as God's son, not first day as her husband. Then I think we're going to do it much better than we've ever done it. So this is very, very important. God wanted to make sure I learned all that. So I learned a lot in his presence for three years, three and a half years. Uh, and then I finally said, Lord, is it her? Uh, and uh, the Lord says, yes. Uh, but you are only to tell her that you like her and that you have been praying for her after you have finished your studies. So I was studying law and it takes about three, three and a half years to do law. And uh, so, yeah, so I, I studied and uh, I finished. And uh, because I've never said to any girl in my life that I like them, it was so hard to tell Sandra that. So I'm like struggling, really struggling. Like, how do I even start the conversation, man? So, like all the other not-so-real girlfriends in the past, I followed after their strategy. I also wrote a letter. And I wrote a letter, Dear Sandra, 
And it was maybe two pages long. But I wanted her to know that, yes, I do like her, but I've been praying for her. Okay? Now, after writing the letter, I had to give it to her. That also, I was so nervous. So nervous. So I asked God for confirmation. And uh, both of us used to serve in the youth group back in FGA. And I would come uh, much earlier on a Saturday. Uh, I would arrive probably by 12, uh, 1230. And she, I know, because she works in KL, by the time she finishes one o'clock, gets onto a bus uh, from Klang bus station, you know, uh, not Klang, Klang, huh? this is KL, Klang bus station. Huh? And uh, she sometimes walks to the bus station and all that. So anyway, I think the earliest she's ever gotten uh, to uh, FGA a youth group on a Saturday is probably about uh, 2.20, 2.25. Just five minutes before the youth group starts, okay? Five, ten minutes before youth group starts. I know it, okay? I know it already. So when I came in to the chapel... Uh, where the youth group meets, I had the letter at the back pocket, okay? And I was asking God for confirmation. And I asked for a hard one. I said, God, if she comes before 2 p.m., which I know is impossible, then I will give her the letter. But if she comes after 2 p.m., then I know it's not you or it's not time. So I walk into the chapel and I look around. Okay, you know, sure enough, uh, it was about uh, maybe want something by then, you know, so I, I talked to some people who were already there, talked to some people who were already there, and uh, I, I still, my heart was still beating fast, uh, and uh, when I look at the clock, the clock is just above the door, okay, uh, when people come in, you can see them coming in, and you can also see the clock, and as I was making my way out, why? Because it was already 1.58, so I was making my way out, and lo and behold, before I could get to the door, 1.59, who is to come in? Yeah, you're right, Sandra. She comes in at 1.59, before 2 p.m., usually only by 2.15, 2.20, 2.25. And I looked at her and you know what I said to her? Why are you here? <laughs> and she says, what do you mean? You was the group man today? And I, I composed myself. No, 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 sorry. Because I was shocked. I was, you know, like, what? You know, that means I have to give the letter, you know. And, 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 and she says, why? Why are you so surprised? And then later on, she told me, for some reason that day, she, she knocked off from, uh, uh, from work 1 p.m. sharp, got down, and there was a bus waiting. All right? The bus, usually she misses, or the bus is packed, so she'd rather walk to Clang Bus Station. The bus was already sort of just arrived or waiting at the bus stop in front of her office. And that saved her maybe about 20, 25 minutes. All right, by the time she got to Klang bus station, there was a bus ready at the Klang bus station uh, to take her to the front of FGA. I, I tell you, when God wants something done, uh, guys, uh, uh, no one, when God opens the door, no man can shut, yeah? Uh, so anyway, now I'm forced to give the letter, uh, right? God, God did his bargain, God did his part of the bargain, uh, and now I have to, so I just say, uh, this letter is for you. Oh, I got a letter, she said, no? Uh, and she probably didn't know what it was. So I said, don't read, don't read it in front of me. Okay, please take it home and read it. And so she read it and uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, and, uh, and it's crazy. So, so uh, hey, hold on. Uh, my, mem my memory failed me so badly that I have to re re rewind this whole thing. Uh, let, me, let me rewind this whole thing. Uh. Okay, let's, let's, let's come back to the place whereby I saw her and I, I, I know God did his, uh, God, uh, did his part uh, and so and I now must do my part. Okay, guys, I don't know why my, my story is so uh, jumbled up. Uh, I did not give her the letter. Yeah, actually, you don't even have to edit the whole part. Uh. Just, just let them listen to my Let them listen to my mistake. I must have been living in the world uh, that thought I gave her the letter. Master, I, I master it's just like choose your own adventure. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So wipe uh, some of this memory out of your, your brains. Uh, it, 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 uh, so, okay, okay, listen, uh, this, is, this is how bad it was. Maybe it was so bad, I wanted to wipe it out and, and, and say I obeyed God. No. So, God did his part, okay? Uh, uh, Sandra came in that door, 159, and I said, oh no, right? And I didn't, guys, I didn't oh. give her the letter. Uh, the, 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 re the reason why I suddenly remember it, because uh, I'm going like, hey, hold on. Uh. She only knew that I liked her 
on a mission trip. Okay, so I'll get there. I'll get there. And and uh, and so uh, I didn't. I didn't give the letter. I was just too nervous, too scared, all that. Uh, uh, but it, it, it's just embedded in my mind uh, that God did His part, and I didn't. And 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 maybe as you're listening to this, knowing already that I'm married uh, to Pastor Sandra, maybe you already know lah that God is merciful lah. That even though he did all his part already, you're supposed to do your, do your part. Uh, he's still merciful. Okay. So, all right. Now let's fast forward. And I am in that year, and this is probably a year later. I am in that year. Yeah, about six months or a year later. No. Uh, let's just say, let's just put the 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 number at six months. Uh, six months later, I was to be the leader of a mission team, and this mission team had, uh, uh, yeah. Some people, but as okay, I can't remember all the people who was on the mission team. But the most important thing you have to remember is Pastor Sandra. Sandra was on the mission team. Okay, I was the leader. Now I was very careful as a leader not to uh, abuse my authority and just say, "Woman, uh, you know, you're marrying me." You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And all those of you leading mission trip, one, well, don't do that. Okay, don't abuse your. God authority. told me, right? Pastor. God <laughs> told me. You know. You know, can you imagine? Uh, come on, mission team. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, the Lord is saying something to me, showing me a face. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. The woman, the woman about to be married to, is somewhere in this room. Oh, no, don't do that. Don't do that. No, don't do. Don't do that. I didn't do that. I was actually with fear and trembling, uh, thinking to myself. Uh, and we went to uh, Thailand for uh, uh, missions. Okay, so uh, this is how it went, huh? I, you know, she, she's very close to me, as in like physically, right? Because we're all sitting in the uh, same bar, same van, uh, this and that. Uh, but I just really tried to control my feelings. Now, I've already controlled my feelings uh, for three and a half years. Okay? So it was not that big a deal. Uh, it's just that feelings are still flying with, within me. Uh, so I tried, okay, I must, must, must be composed uh, and controlled uh, because I'm a leader. Let's be spiritual about this. Let's be a good leader. Okay. Now, in... Uh, tuk tuk in a Thai tuk tuk okay uh, three of us sat in the tuk tuk now tuk tuk uh, is not very big you know but I also wasn't very big at the time okay I was smaller size and then uh, Pastor Sandra uh, Sandra sat in the middle and there was another lady on the side tuk tuk we were rushing to get to the bus station I remember that yeah now I remember that so the tuk-tuk was you know, moving along and trying to get us to the bus station. And Sandra now is so near to me. Her, her shoulder is touching mine. You know, her leg is touching mine. And I, I'm praying in tongues. I'm telling you, Kurraba And I say, God, please lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. You know, I'm not talking, saying that Sandra is the evil one. It's just <laughs> deliver me. <laughs> but the team is laughing here. But um, and then I, I didn't want to look at her, uh, you know, or look at her hand or look at her thighs, you know. Hey, don't look at her thighs. Uh. Uh, and <laughs> so I looked to my left, I looked to my left, and you know, I was sitting very near to the to the wheel of this tuk-tuk. And I don't know why, suddenly the wheel spoke to me. Spoke to me. Like uh, in Ezekiel, uh, there is this wheel that speaks. And so this speaks says, this speaks says, this wheel says. Tell her, Kenneth. <laughs> Tell her. Tell her now. And I, 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 so I looked away from the wheel. I'm like, no, get ye behind me, Satan. <laughs> and then we got to the bus station. And I was still nervous. And uh, we were waiting for our bus. And before the bus came, the bus was on its way already, right? Yeah, and before it parked and we were supposed to go up, uh, I, talk, I talked with Sandra. I said, uh, uh, something to do with relationships. Lah. And she was saying something like, yeah, you know, guys, uh, uh, you know, if they really love the Lord and they really want to serve God, then, you know, then maybe I'm interested. Lah. Uh, then I, I said something, you know, so I feel so silly saying it, but some of us guys have done it before. Lah. I said, I said, how about guys like me? <laughs> smooth, Pastor, smooth. That was so smooth. <laughs> Pastor, you didn't follow up with a joking, joking, right? <laughs> no, then she says, she says something like, guys like you, then she said, you never try also? 
And that was my cue. And because I've taken her out for, uh, you know, just uh, one-on-one uh, chats, we didn't even call it dates because it, we're just friends. Uh, and I was, my, my, my college was very near her workplace. I was studying law and she was already working. And uh, so sometimes I would take her out and I would treat her to the meals. You know, I, I just felt that that was a gentlemanly thing to do. And then I joked with her. Lah. Half joke, lah, half joke. Lah. I said, never try all the meals I, I pay for all eh? And then she laughed. Hey, uh, that one you want to pay, ma? Yeah. So we were kind of like jesting and joking. And so, guys, you get careful with your jokes uh, with the opposite sex. Uh. If you're not interested, don't joke, okay? Uh, and don't jest and don't touch their shoulder and don't touch their ties. Uh, you know, yeah, the only ties you can have is from KFC or Texas Instrument, uh, okay? Hey, Texas Instrument. So just to clarify, instrument. you didn't do it, right? You yeah. didn't do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no way, no way, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's not say it. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> bus, bus, the bus. <laughs> the bus, the bus. <laughs> so, now, we enter the bus and she chooses to sit next to me. Because I think she, you know, women now, they can feel it. Right? They can feel it. Uh. Call it women intuition or whatever, they can feel it. So I think she maybe felt that there was more I wanted to say. And so for the whole bus trip, I was just explaining to her how I first saw her and, uh, you know, liked her. And yet I, I couldn't because God said, pray. And I've been praying for three, three and a half years. I think the thing that really got to her was that I prayed for her. And she thought to herself, how many women can say that their husbands prayed for them and waited for them so long? In the midst of them introducing their boyfriends, you know. And I said, if only you knew. Uh, But I said this to her. I said, but Sandra, can I say this to you? It was a very private thing because it was just two seats right on the bus and I'm trying to speak softly so that, you know, I keep keep looking behind and the front, whether my teammates are also listening, but they are sleeping. Uh, it was a long bus ride, so I said, okay, they're sleeping, all right. So even, even when they're sleeping, I still whisper, whisper, she's also whispering. And, uh, you know, I said this to her, and I really not just mean it. Uh, I want to advise all of you who are watching and, you know, also praying about your future. I said to her, Sandra, I have surrendered you so often over three years, three years plus now, that I am not afraid, even if you said no. And this is, this is the power of it. No? The power of real surrender is, again, I want to re- repeat myself, it's no longer your will, but His. If you surrender something enough, uh, you are now used to that decision being in somebody's court. For example, if you had... Uh, a young boy, your son or your nephew living with you, but every day you have to surrender that young boy to the grandmother's place or, you know, and you do it enough, uh, after a while, it might, <laughs> the child, that young boy that you keep surrendering to your grandmother for the next three and a half years, uh, it might become the grandmother's boy. <laughs> and he might listen more to the grandmother than to you. You, you get what I'm saying? If you surrender something enough, you actually lose ownership of it. And sometimes it's bad, but some, in some instances it's good. That really the Lord just wanted my heart to be fully surrendered. Because guys, let me talk to guys now. If you're not ready for a no, then you're not ready. If all you, you live for is a yes, give me yes, then my life is complete. Then maybe your life will never be complete even if she said yes, because she or he doesn't complete you. I, I know you know the movie, yeah? but uh, that famous words is just nice romantically. Lah. You complete me. This is nice romantically. Girls might want to hear their guys say that. But in Christ, it doesn't work that way because he, Christ, should complete us. Uh, so can I be very truthful with you? A, a lot of people like to joke about it. Like, oh, uh, Pastor Kenneth, how if she said no? Oh, you know, uh, when the boyfriend sh- shook your hand, uh, were you really very nervous and very angry? You know, when you keep surrendering, 
when you keep surrendering, you don't feel normal feelings like other guys feel when they don't surrender. I, I have to be very truthful because sometimes some people might go like, oh, the way you share, Pastor Kedah, is so abnormal, so spiritual. Why are you so spiritual? No, no, I, I cannot be very truthful with you. I, I can only tell you how I felt. And when I shook that man's hand, the, the boyfriend of Pastor Sandra, it was really one and a half years of surrendering. And I already came to a place where, well, by God, if, 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 if he is the best for her, then he is the best for her. I only, and this is the thing, you know, when we really, when do we really know we love a woman? When we want for that woman the best. Which means that if you are not the best for her, then may you not be the one that will marry her. That's when you know you really love a woman. And if I'm the best, then no other man should have her. But if I'm not the best, then make uh, the man's hand that I was shaking, if you're the best man, have her. Because that's true love. And, and, and so, can I just say this to you? And this is not just hindsight, and this is not just being over-spiritual. No, no. God is always working on our hearts. And what He wants to complete us, mature us, perfect us. So there were a lot of things that happened in that three years of surrender. And so I said, Sandra, because she said, she said to me, Kenneth, thank you for sharing all this with me. Um, could you give me six months to pray about it? So there you go. Pastor Sandra is a woman of God. She loved Jesus and she wanted to make sure that it's Jesus. And I didn't even know that she was still in the relationship with this guy. Because I didn't hear her telling me anything about And I didn't realize that already they had problems in their relationship because Pastor Sandra wanted to serve the Lord, go to church, serve church, be a worship leader, go for missions. That was her ultimate goal though, to be on the mission field as a missionary. And this guy kept telling her, why do you go to church so often? Why must you serve all the time? Why must you go for worship practice? Why, why put God first? Shouldn't I be first? That kind of stuff. Like, you know, maybe if he didn't say it or so, he, he showed it. And then uh, missions, come on, you know, I, I, I can't go to missions. So if we are married, you know, uh, I can't go. And so she was struggling because she actually liked the guy and she also like, uh, you know, maybe this could work. Uh, but um, she says, it won't work if Jesus is not first in our relationship. So thank God. See, God knows how to put two people together. A man totally in love with Jesus, a woman totally in love with Jesus, when they come together, it's explosive. Alright? Uh, that's why don't be unequally yoked because when you're unequally yoked, one person will draw you away. Uh, uh, you know, you're, you, you are form five, but you're marrying somebody who's form one or standard six. So that standard six will always going to draw you back to standard six. Uh, you're trying to lift that the person to, to form five, but you can't because they have to go through their own process of maturity. Important? So, okay, let's finish the bus story uh, and, 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 and tell you that Pastor Sandra said six months. And I tell you what, some people will go like, oh, Pastor Kendall, you must have felt, felt really nervous. Uh. But I said, no. I, I would not expect her to say anything less than please give me time to pray. And I said, take the time you need. Uh, and uh, I was really secure in the Lord. And again, uh, I was ready for a no. Uh, I'm a little bit younger than Pastor Sandra in age. So some people go like, oh, wow, you know, you're not, you know, you're not older. Usually the man should be older. You know? I, I, I don't want to follow what the world's standards. I just want to follow God, what He says to me. Uh, and uh, so she, Pastor Sandra did that. We finished the mission trip. Uh, she uh, went home. Uh, we went home to uh, KL. And uh, my wife prayed for six months. And within uh, that six months, even the early, in fact, she said, uh, two weeks after I shared that with her, the guy came up to her. I think it was two weeks or one month. Within that first two weeks, first one month after she and I spoke, the guy came up to her and wanted to break the relationship. Uh, and I think he came to his wit's end of like, oh yeah, this girl is too spiritual for me, too on fire for God, blah, blah, blah. And so, Pastor Sandra, I think this, uh, this will be her story if she had the chance to tell you. He broke up with her and she's like, what? Nobody breaks up with me, Pastor Sandra, you know, in her cute, arrogant way. You know, I, I'm the one who break guys off. Uh, uh, so she said, but anyway, she said this is the first time a guy came up to her and, and, and broke it off. And then he went back home and I think it was a month or two later, he came back to her and said, uh, I think I was a bit rash. Uh, let's not break up. And Pastor Sandra like, I think, I think it's okay. Lah. 
let's just keep it this way. And then she continued to pray about our relationship. And uh, six months to the dot, she called me and she said, Kenneth, let's go for a meal. And uh, we went for a meal. And then she looked at me. I remember paying for that bill as well. <laughs> but that's uh, despite the point. Besides the point. Besides the point. Uh, and, 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 and she said, Kenneth, I told you I would pray, right? Six months. Uh, and she says, today is the dot of six months. And I want to say to you, yes. Of course, you know, Merdeka and Independence Day and Chinese New Year and Hari Raya and Deepavali, all happening at the same time. Lah. You know, because although I did say all that I said earlier, you know, I'm ready for no, but when the yes comes, you know, and you have waited for this girl and you've probably, hopefully done all things right in the sight of God, uh, that yes, you know, it's like, wow, God, uh, I think we're going to have a great future. Uh, for you uh, together. So yeah, uh, and uh, we got together after that. But I tell you what, the thing uh, is, uh, we, we told ourselves that even though we are in a relationship or started a relationship, we don't want to make it look like everybody knows this relationship. So when we got married about a year and a half later, a lot of our friends were like, huh, you were together, man? Because we didn't hold hands. Uh, when we went to church, we didn't sit together. You know, sometimes I feel like boy, girl, boy, friend, girlfriend, they want to show everybody, you know. Uh, and suddenly hold hands, la, then one leg over the other leg, la, and then, you know, and then uh, 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 his and her t-shirt, and then his and her, you know, uh, bag, la, and then, you know, must go out together. I thought to myself, hey, I'm not so insecure. La. My, my, my girlfriend, let's call it that for now, my girlfriend had had things to do. And I have things to do. And the one thing that God taught me earlier is don't leave any room for regret. Meaning, if you are supposed to live as a single, enjoy it. Don't live as a married person while you're single. Because later on, you will want to live like a single person while you're married. You get what I'm trying to say? So, time for everything under heaven. I had guys... I had to minister to. She had girls. She had mission trips she had to go to. I had mission trips. Why do you need to suddenly declare your love for one another among your... No need. Thank God I didn't have any Facebook that time and didn't change my status. And there, 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 there's no status to change. Now. I'm a child of God. She's a child of God. We are best friends and we will continue to build our friendship but we have things to do. Listen to those of you who are listening. Huh? Don't you have things to do? Hello? <laughs> Don't you... Or maybe you said, no, La Pastor, I don't, have any, I don't have anything to do. I only have her to do. Hello, don't do her, okay? Whatever it is. Okay, you have got things to do. Things to do, keep on doing. So no room for regret. Then by the time you're married, the woman will say, I, I had the best singlehood. Until the day just before our wedding, uh, I was out with my girlfriends. Because when we're married, we have to change some things, you see? I can't always hang out with the guys. She can't always hang out with girls. It's a different status already, okay? And then we now have to do things together. So until the very end, all right, be the best single you can be. Because when you're married, you want to be the best married person you can be. So I'm very thankful to the Holy Spirit for teaching me these things along the way. All right, open to questions. So, Pastor, actually, I got a few questions, but you kind of answered most of them as you're sharing. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, I'll just say the question anyway, but I've got one question that you haven't answered. So I want to ask you about, uh, you know, a lot of people, I mean, basically you were friend zone, Pastor, yes, yes. for three years. I mean, that's the yes. term we use even now. Even longer, even longer. You know, and I was, uh, I was we gonna, were, we were part of a youth group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we knew each other longer. Yeah, and I was going to ask you, like, how do you navigate that time? Because when you talk about relationships, you're very focused, but you just kind of answered that question yes. just now by being focused on things yes. to do, right, Pastor? Yes. Um, another question I have for you, Pastor, is why didn't you give her the letter? And what were you feeling at the time? And what happened to the letter, Pastor? Oh, yeah, okay, good good question, uh, Alvin. Uh, so, uh, it, it's, just, it's just nervousness. Like. Now, listen, I, I just shared with you earlier that I've never said to any girl that I like her, ever. So, I, even, I don't even know how it's done. 
And most of us are afraid of the reaction or the response, the negative uh, response or reaction. And uh, so, um, so many other things that cross my mind. Uh, do I give it to her here in front of all the other uh, people in the youth group? Will they ask, what letter was that? Uh, will she read it right in front of me? Will she read it and then not have concentration? Uh, you know, uh, will she read it in the middle of the youth group time and then cry and go like, why him? You know, uh, uh, so many things, so many things. But, but basically, it's, it was just jitters. Uh, and, and jitters maybe backed up by the different things I said to you. Uh, and uh, I actually felt bad, no, Elvin. I really felt bad. Uh, because I felt God had done his part mm. and I didn't do mine. And I was actually begging God for mercy. Like, God, please don't use this one thing to take away if she was meant for me. Uh, because you, know, you feel like God, I did my part and you useless fella, you know, you're not going to get her anymore. Okay, I'm going to give her now to somebody. I think you almost uh, dramatized this in your mind. Uh, and the letter was still with me. The letter was still with me. And I think, if I'm mistaken, I gave it to her. Uh, finally, I said, this was the letter I'm supposed to give you. And she didn't know anything about the clock and the 159 and the, why are you, what are you doing here? You know, and she only knew that, but it's youth group day, lah, you know. And she told me uh, that, that was one of the earliest she's ever been uh, to the youth group, 159. Uh, in fact, she must have been there earlier already because she has to walk up the stairs, go through the door. Um, I gave her, I, I believe I gave her a letter, but you can check with her at other times uh, whether she still has a letter. Uh, but uh, or oh, whether I actually gave her the letter, uh, but I think I did, I think I Pastor. It's so cool because uh, it kind of speaks of how good God is to us. Mm. That even yes. when we make mistakes, He still cares God enough to take care chances. of His children. God of uh, and uh, I mean that's quite encouraging. Yeah. Uh, so thanks for sharing that, Pastor. Yeah. Pastor, I have a question. Okay. Yeah, so being the campus pastor, I've got a campus-related question. Okay. <laughs> sure. So based on what you shared, Pastor. Yeah. Uh, what would you say to people? Uh, just what would be your thoughts uh, in terms of people saying, you know, all these are very traditional mindset, you know, waiting, you know, probably this made sense back then, but now with, you know, how things have, have progressed, maybe actually it's okay to date during campus years, uh, you know, and some may even say that you know, uh, back then maybe uh, accountability, having to share with leader is important, but now... Not so much. So, Pastor, the question is, has that standard changed with how the world has changed in the past 10 years or has it actually still remained the same? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, uh, Stephen. Uh, to me, the standards haven't changed because the standards weren't set by me nor my parents. It was set by God uh, in my waiting upon Him, in my falling after Him, wanting to do it right in His eyes. Uh, it was not me who put out, neither did our leaders, you know. I, I can't remember a statement out there, date only after college or do not date during college. There was no standard there for me, as far as I can remember. Uh, so for God to say, tell her only after you finish your, de your degree became his standard. Now, of course, later on you can ask why and try to guess why. And some of the guesses would be, uh, let's not try to date another person using our parents' money. Uh, let's try to at least be working already. Or if you're earning, great. You know, maybe you're, you're doing a side hustle as a student. Okay, fine. No problem. Uh, but I have never made that a hard and fast rule. I, I seem to, as I discover myself a little bit more, Stephen, I seem to be not for rules as much as as I am for the reason behind those rules. Like some people will say, Pastor Kenneth, I think the Ten Commandments therefore being in the Old Testament is no longer relevant. But then some people will argue and say, no, it's still relevant. Uh, you read it and you know it's still relevant even though know it's old. And let's again uh, put it out there that not everything that's old is bad. Not everything that's traditional is bad. Okay, So people like to use the word traditional but first of all, is traditional bad? Uh, because if immediately you say traditional and traditional means bad, then we are in trouble. Uh, so, um, uh, I think as I, as I was growing up and even in my own uh, walk, 
in my own uh, prayer, in my own downloading from the Lord, uh, I, I just feel like it's not just traditional, it's not just, it's not just old, uh, it's not just standards of man, it's, 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 it's God. Uh, uh, accountability, I must, I'm very honest to you, uh, I don't think I was accountable to anyone. Uh, I, I didn't tell any leader that I like Sandra uh, because I didn't have a leader like that. Uh, maybe that was one of the main reasons. Uh, in my time, I didn't have a harder leader above me, nothing like that. So even if I wanted to tell, so I don't know who to tell. And I didn't want to tell all the friends or because I wanted to keep it as, a, as something where I don't, the Malay would say, hebo, hebo, you know, mm. uh, announce and declare and trumpet. You know, like I got her, kind of thing. You know? So I, I, I wanted to make sure that the heart of everything I did was right. And that will probably be my answer to your question. It is always the heart of it. Why tell? Uh, what is the heart of telling a leader? Uh, it's even more important than telling the leader. Uh, what is the heart of waiting? Uh, and all this. Now, the, the heart of waiting to me was, uh, the Lord told me this, no? Uh, as I was waiting upon him, he said to me, Kenneth, how long do you need to study for law? And I said, three years. He says, when do you think you will retire as a lawyer? I said, maybe at 50. And then he says, but you don't want to wait for a wife who you will be with forever. Wow. Three years you would give to a degree. Six years for medical. And not every doctor will be a doctor up to 60, 70, 80. But you will be a husband forever. Mm. And yet you don't want to give three years. You don't want to give six years. How come we rather give years to something that we will retire from uh, and not give years? So it, it speaks about how much you value. Because waiting equals value. And we will always wait, even for a ticket to go and watch Bruno Mars or whatever. You will wait in line. And we always wait for things we value. And the more we wait, that's why I say when she said yes, all the celebrations happened within me because it was the waiting. It was, she's valuable. And if she's valuable then, she can and should be valuable for the rest of my life. If she was not uh, worth the wait, then the value will start to diminish through the years. And you will realize after a while, maybe I went for her good looks. Mm. And now that her looks are no longer there, now she's no longer funny or whatever it is, you know, it starts to diminish. So, uh, can I just say to you that all these things that you're bringing up, that, that the young people are saying, all traditional, uh, 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 irrelevant, blah, blah, blah. Uh, well, they might be right uh, in a certain way if they're only looking at it as man-made standards. Mm. But God made standards, I think, last forever. Yeah. Uh, and please, again, remember the heart of it uh, and the wisdom behind it. Because when God says something, uh, there's always God's wisdom behind that. Mm. And most of us who don't have God's mind, don't have God's wisdom, will have to discover it. But it's only discovered from the place of obedience. You have to obey first and then discover along the way. If you don't obey and don't get, get yourself into that, then how will you ever discover God's will? Oh, now I know why God told me to. Now I see the wisdom in it. And stuff. Mm. Thank you, Pastor. I've got one last question sure. related to that. Pastor, you didn't just wait for mm. Pastor Sandra. You waited to tell her mm. how you feel. Yeah. Well, what do you think about this statement of, uh, you know, let's say someone were to say, I think I just want to be honest in my feelings. Mm. I don't want to be in a relationship now, but I want to be honest with how I feel about this person. Uh, so I want to tell. Yeah. What do you think of this statement yeah. and line of thought? Well, first of all, if you're praying about it and God says tell, tell. No, that's fine. Uh, but if you are not praying about it, then I should ask you to pray about it. Uh, if you're praying about it and you haven't heard from God, then it's probably going to be the flesh. Yeah. And... Um, this is what the flesh usually uh, says or shouts. This is the anthem of every flesh uh, or fleshly decision. It's, it's very selfish. So when a person says, I can't hold it back, it's I can't hold it back. Mm. 
I need to be honest is I need to be honest. Uh, if I don't tell her, I might lose out. I. Uh, very seldom you're thinking about, is she ready? Mm. Can she take this? Is it fair to her? Mm. You get what I'm saying? And love does that. Love does that. Uh, and, uh, but if you're moving the flesh, not the spirit, it, then it's always going to be filled with I. I will lose out. Uh, I just want to get it off my chest. Mm. Right? And then you're going to hurt her. You're going to make it awkward for her. But nobody thinks about that. They think about I. Uh, and I, I know both guys will say, but if I don't do it, you know, if I don't book first, <laughs> if she doesn't know first, then she'll be so swooped up by another guy you know, who doesn't love her. Now, first of all, how do you know the other guy doesn't love her? Okay, and, yeah. okay? I mean, how can you judge her that? But if you really trust God, He knows what's best for you, do you think He will allow that to happen? If that lady is really God's choice for you, she can have another three more boyfriends, uh, but she'll come back. Mm -hmm. That is my, you've got to have some faith. Uh, yeah. That even your relationship, the one you end up with, uh, is God's choice mm. uh, for your life. I'm a big believer in that. Uh, now, not to say uh, that after God speaks to you uh, and then you still want to sleep, uh, and you don't, uh, that also can be extreme. And then God will probably say, wake up. Yeah. Right? That's another one. Uh, like, because some guys are like, hello, the girl has really shown him all the signs, you know, like him, receive his gifts and all that, uh, but he still doesn't want to move. He still doesn't, doesn't want to say anything. Guys have to lead. Uh. Mm. If the girl's going to lead, then don't complain when she leads your marriage. Uh, mm. Right? No, the guys still have to be. Now, Pastor Sandra said to me, she had to wait for me to say it. That's why proposal, uh, some people, modern day one, uh, come on, uh, it's okay for the girl to propose. I still believe the guy should. Yeah. Mm. Because it is yeah. leadership. Now, more and more modern thinking will come uh, through in the next few months, years. Uh, and people think it's okay. But don't just look at the end result. Look at the spirit behind it, the why behind it, the, the wisdom uh, behind it. So back to your question again. Uh, it can be very selfish and self-centered. Uh, and then when you end up hearing a no, you are the only one crying. Mm. Because it was all about you anyway. Yeah. So you cry. Lah. Mm. And then some people want to die. So then what to do? Mm. But, but it's back on you again. But if, if God was always in the picture, then all, even though you, you were a little bit hurt, it will be, you will find healing. Even though you'll be a little bit disappointed, you'll get over this. Mm. Because God was always in the picture. But if God was never in the picture, it was just yourself, then be ready also to carry the load by yourself. Mm. When there is a no, when there is a wait, when there, uh, I never liked you, <laughs> then carry the load by yourself. Mm. But because the load was always surrendered to God for three years, then when she said no, if Pastor Andrew said no, the load is no longer what I am carrying. It's he. He has been carrying it for three years now. And it's, it, it, it lands easier. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Because if she says no, then God has someone better for me. Mm. You got to think like that. Mm. Uh, and God has something, someone better for her also. Mm. So uh, I think God wants us to really love even before we love. Mm. You know? Uh, and uh, so if Pastor Sandra ever ended up with somebody else, uh, I would know in my, the depth of my heart that I actually loved her enough to let her go. Mm. Uh, because someone was better for the kind of thing. Uh, but it's, it's that time like that when God says, give the letter, whatever. And then that's why I say God's mercy. Because when I should be acting, I also didn't yet. Mm. I only wrote the letter. Mm. But I, I think when God looked at my heart, he didn't see disobedience from a place of like, just wanting to disobey. He probably saw, uh, okay, like this son of mine, uh, the worst. <laughs> you know, like if you were a parent, uh, you probably say, you, actually you would be upset. Why my son didn't do it? You'd be probably upset. But yeah. then you go like, but he's, he's a good guy lah. <laughs> he probably was just nervous like crazy la. so you take him aside huh? uh, and so, but there's another kind of disobedience whereby you just don't want to do it because you hate God's yeah. choice for you, you mm. that's different uh, different story you know? but I think he could see that it was out of weakness mm. that I couldn't more than anything else yeah. mm. hope that helps yeah really good pastor thank you okay Okay, Pastor, uh, I have two questions. Uh, some of them, like, because recently the ex Wawa getaway just ended, right? So we talked to different ones. Yeah. So, what, you, what did you get from the getaway and all that? So, all that. So, yeah, I have two questions, Pastor. Yeah. So, first of all, uh, well, nowadays, there are, it seems like there are many single guys who are older mm. and uh, haven't found the right one looking for a life partner. So, Pastor, what encouragement or guide would you recommend to our guys? 
our guys first. What? Like, what should they do? Like some natural stuff as well. Like, yeah. What What should they do, Pastor? Like, let's say they they really want to find a good wife, yeah. and uh, they haven't found yet, yeah. and they are older. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they got to pray and they got to have faith, uh, that uh, these kinds of partnerships and marriage mm. is in God's will, uh, and um, so it's not wrong to be praying and to be having your eyes open. Um, there are sometimes other problems with guys uh, like me. I never say I like you to a girl before. So um, who knows what guys go through and the nervousness or whatever it is or the pride, you know. I want a girl to tell me, you know, uh, I don't know. Um, if there's any of these practical things to go through, there are two things that uh, God will reveal it to you if you're really seeking Him. Uh, and saying, actually God, why? Uh, is there something I need to do? It could be sometimes even their personality, sometimes too loud, sometimes too soft. Sometimes the girl who is supposed to be your wife is sitting right opposite you, can't, you can't even talk. Uh, and when you talk, you talk nonsense. Uh, some guys, they are older, but they are not mature. Uh, and the girls are looking for a man to lead them, uh, to continue to you know, uh, be their strength, uh, and to guide and to nurture them, right? So you can see, oh, yo, this is like my younger brother, man. <laughs> How is he going to nurture me, you know? Uh, or this is like my kid brother. Or, you know, uh, the perception of the woman to the man also is very, very important. And so the man has got to learn to be a man and, and more importantly to be a man of God. Uh, so he can learn this from the Lord, learn this from the Word, learn this from the church, learn this from older men. So maybe they should actually connect with other men and ask, you know, is there anything I can change? Uh, sometimes you just change your shirt because you have B.O., and uh, I mean, I, I'll be very honest with you, it, it, it can put people off. Uh, so, hygiene. Hygiene. Uh, and uh, so many other things, uh, you know. Uh, that's, that's to say your part. So, there are parts that men have to take responsibility for. Alright. Uh, some are very scared of commitment. You know. Uh, some are... I mean, they don't even treat their mothers well. How are they going to treat their wife well? No, there's, 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 there's very practical things. And older men can tell you. Older men can tell you, uh, hey, you're always, you know, so rude to girls. How are you going to ever find... A... And, and women, same thing also. I've actually uh, told Pastor Sandra to tell a girl to change her dressing before. Alright? Because the way she's dressing, uh, I don't think any guy will be attracted uh, to her. But say, it's me, uh, he should like me for my, my, my character... Not my, but who knows your character? He hasn't even spoken to you yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at least give him a chance to talk to you. Then they thought he knows your character. So, you know, I'm not even asking you to wear low cut and all that. Show your, you know, no, no need. The man shouldn't also be after your breasts, okay? <laughs> it, it, it should be after your brains. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, older women and older men can help. Whether or not these men and women can open themselves to be helped, would they take it from another guy? Take it from another girl? Yeah. I, hope, I hope... Girls are better. Girls are usually better. Majority. Guys are more like, <coughs> I know, I, I'm macho. And you think the girl wants that because of their macho-ness and because of their money. Uh, well, you will draw different kind of girls. Huh? You will... Yeah, they might be drawn to your muscles then you draw different kind of girls. You know? Then when your muscles go, they also go. Or, or your money. You, when your money goes, they go. No, you, you don't want that. Uh, so, Shirley, this is a good question. Uh, but uh, another one I want to add is uh, so, so it's God it's you so trust God have faith in Him He knows the best but then you what can you do to change but one more is what I just said earlier if a man is not ready to be a single if you're not happy to be yourself or by yourself you will never have, be happy being with another person speaks of confidence. It speaks, this, uh, speaks of, I'm satisfied with my life. I'm satisfied with what God is doing in my life. I'm satisfied. So the whole thing about, even if Pastor Sandra said no, that, that security is very important in a man. Uh, and when a man is secure, it's, it's one of the most, I, 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 I don't always like to use this word, but sexy. One of the sexiest things a man can have is not his muscles, not his clothes, and not his car, is confidence. It's, uh, you know, secure, yeah. just secure. 
uh, not easily pushed around, not easily uh, carried about. You know, just, just secure, steady, on your two feet. I'm all right. And a girl is very attracted to that. Uh, and the same confidence you'll be able to also extend to her uh, later on, uh, you know, if you ever get together. Uh, but not many guys are, are like that. Uh, they look like that. But, uh, uh, you know, in, in reality, uh, they're not. So please be happy as a single. And then you're ready to be a double. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, because if you're everywhere looking for your loss of rib, right, under the table, <laughs> under the bed, you know, in the cupboard, where is my, you know, I'm not complete, you know, right? Now girls can see that and they can smell it also. This guy is so insecure. <laughs> Right? What in the world? Then that means if I marry him, I'm gone because then that's it. I'll, I'll, I'll be just fulfilling. I will have to fulfill his confidence. I will have to be there. That's why men will call women. Where are you? Where are you? I'm with my girlfriend just having a, a drink. Yeah, I, where are you? I'm nothing without you, don't you know? You know? I'm incomplete. Like that. Like that. Scary. 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 Uh, uh, so no. I, no problem. My wife asked me one, oh, uh, my friends came back from the US, can I? I said, go, have a great time. You want me to fetch you there and you know, I'll bring you there, bring you back? No, it's okay. okay. I got my own car, great. I said, uh, uh, but you go, but I know I might be having dinner with the guys. So it, yeah. it's very important. And the girls also shouldn't be, it's okay. Oh, how come you're out with your guys again? Yeah. So uh, it's, it's a very beautiful thing or handsome thing to have uh, when you are okay mm. being who you are. And then the Lord will go like, he's ready. Right? But sometimes I think uh, the Lord is so kind to the girl that he doesn't give the girl to you because you are still messed up. <laughs> he's very kind. Yes. And to you also. Uh, and this is not to say that every guy who's single uh, has problems. Uh. No, no, no. Maybe because they're so secure, they're all right. But I think guys who are secure and single are also ready if God brings a person. And I think it's going to be a beautiful relationship uh, because you're not so desperate out there looking, searching. Yeah. I know it's a long answer to a short question but that would be my advice uh, because I think guys have a part to play also and after having played all that part, just rest in the Lord and let him bring the evil. And if he doesn't, uh, this, this question is what you got to answer. If he doesn't bring my Eve, it's fine. It's fine. Because the eve of anything uh, is just the eve. Uh, the real celebration is Christmas. The real celebration, uh, uh, not Christmas Eve so much. Not, okay, anyway, I'm just joking. But uh, yeah, don't, don't just be looking out for the eve. Look out for the real thing, uh, which is just joy in the Lord. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. and um, secure in Him. Thank you so much, Pastor. Uh, I have one more question. But so, uh, like you say, Pastor, some guys are like quieter or more passive or more jittery. Then, uh, so the question has come, like I've heard quite a few girls ask or heard of other girlfriends asking. So, so, so all this while we say, you know, uh, girls, you need to wait for the guy to pop the question, you know, even to express his uh, thoughts and uh, interest. So the question is, Pastor, can girls pursue? They say, well, now it's like equality, you know, gender equality, you know, why can't, why can't the girls do it? Can we, can we do it? And from a guy's perspective, Pastor, how would, uh, generally, we talk about generally. How, how, how do you think a guy would generally take such a pursuit or advancement from a girl? Because like, like, some say, oh, I think some guys like it, you know, like I'm helping him or, you know, but, but yeah, Pastor, just yeah. honest yeah, from Thank you. a guy. Thank you for the question. I think that the girl giving a little bit of help to a guy that's nervous or not used to this is all right. Pastor Sandra said, you never ask or so? was like a help. And that started everything else. But if I remain quiet in the bus, I can't blame her for not continuing the conversation. But I took that hint and I went for it. Uh, so girls out there, if your guys are like that, you know, uh, not your guys, uh, if your friends are like that, because not your guy yet, uh, uh, then and you really like the guy and you think he likes you too, then just say something that just kind of like, you know, just... It's not pursuit. It's more of like, just hint. Um, you know. Hey, I, I wore your favorite color today, you know. Hint. Uh, you know. Uh, 
it could be a birthday and it could be a gift. Yeah, just, just helping him along. Yeah, yeah. All right? He's not so used to telling girls. And actually, girls should like that, no? That, that means your man uh, is not around going around Casanova, no? He's so experienced, huh? He's so... You know, girls, I really tell you, uh, you don't want a guy so experienced, no? Uh, you wonder, huh, I don't know what to do. Okay, then you go like, okay. Then I think, you know, this is the right guy, lah. Okay. Um, uh, but pursuit. If a lady really does want to pursue her guy, then I want to say that you are already going against the nature, the very nature of how you were made. Because all of us know that guys uh, by nature pursue. Guys by nature hunt. Uh, and women take what is hunted and make something out of it. To feed the man again. <laughs> All right? I like how you were said before, no? Uh, women always take what guys give them and make it better. The man give her a seed, she makes a baby. The man gives her a piece of meat, she makes, you know, a meal. You know? The guy gives her a house, she makes it a home. But the guy must give. The guy's the way God made guys is to hunt, to pursue, and then to bring back and let the woman make something beautiful of it. You see? Um, yeah. Now, if the guy starts wanting to make things beautiful, then, then he's also now getting into the woman's role. You get what I'm saying? And again, it's not like wrong, wrong, but you have to, you have to work so much harder when you're going against your nature or the way you were made. So I won't say totally wrong. I mean, if a girl does pursue her guy, then gets him, then married, then got three kids, and he, praise God, lah, you know. Uh, it's just that I hope that pursuit doesn't need to continue for the rest of your life. Lah. Because if you have to pursue him for courtship and marriage, then in the marriage, will you continue be the one wearing the pants? Yeah. After a while, you will really kill the nature within the man to provide for the family, or to defend the family. Because these two are, these two P's, right? Provision, protection. Belongs to the man. Uh, and so after a while, the woman has to continue to do it. Then the man loses all his manlyhood, loses his very nature. And then the woman will one day complain and go like, what kind of guy? Early days are easy, you know? Because all love, romance in the air. But when he starts not being the man, you've always wanted him to be, uh, then you will start complaining and we've seen it and heard it over and over again, surely. People are regretting later because they started against their nature and they continued against their nature and suddenly you come and it becomes the whole, the whole deal, the whole union, the whole marriage uh, is now unnatural. You see? Uh, and then the lady who longs for the man to be the man actually was probably also at fault for taking away the man that she wanted. Uh, so I would say, uh, rule of thumb, just let people live in the nature that God has created. Yes, sometimes you can bend the rule and, and, not, and, and whatnot, uh, uh, and it's not totally wrong, but be careful what you're asking for. Because what you sow, you reap. And if you keep sowing that, don't complain about, hey, I saw durian, but how suddenly, you know, I wanted apple. Uh, but you kept putting durian and then suddenly, you know, what tree will come is the tree that you never wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, your question was that. And um, I just want to say that the best advice is just to keep to the way God created us and you're going to be fine. That's why Pastor Sandra, uh, you know, she was also very clear about what a man should be. And she said, I'm just waiting for him. Uh, to propose uh, and I think that's important that's good Pastor so we'll have a last question mm. um, because I mean I, as I'm hearing you share there's a lot of God in the picture mm. and I'm thinking of those people who may not know this God that you know yet uh, who may be in a relationship or, or pursuing a relationship pursuing someone Pastor I mean what will your advice or encouragement be for them uh, who uh, may not have that you know, North Star or that guiding, you know, what will you tell them, Pastor? All right, very good question. So, even though you don't have God, 
it doesn't mean you don't have God values. Uh, and uh, that's important. Because finally, even after knowing God, you've got to follow His way or His ways. I mean, knowing God personally helps with faith, helps with trust. So you can't see, but you believe. So that part maybe most people who don't know God will not have. Like, oh, I'm so desperate, but oh, I look to Jesus. Uh, people who don't have Jesus will not be able to do that. But most of the success actually comes from values. Uh, the right ways of doing things. And that's why we can teach God's ways anywhere in an in, in a, in a office setting, in a school. Uh, people go away successful because they are using God's ways. Some people like to call it best practices. So why are some marriages working out there even though they don't know God personally? Why? Because there are best practices in their lives. There are values. You cannot say that a non-Christian don't have values. No? They have. And so their marriages still work. Some, uh, they are tolerating. So they, they look like, wow, they've been married 40 years, 50 years, but they have been tolerating. Maybe um, I never want to argue, even though they should. And to get down to the, you know, to, 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 the, to the real issues, they had to maybe argue a bit, come to that place. But some people keep their marriage going because they never want to argue. But then they learn to keep it inside. Uh. So in those days, uh, our parents and grandparents, uh, actually a lot of them kept it inside. And they were very resilient that way. Very strong, very patient. And they took it to their graves, most, most of them. All right? Today, we have more expressive generation. We have more like what Stephen said, now, I just had to get it off my chest. All right? Those days, they, I tell you, uh, a lot of them just survived. For the sake of their kids, you know. Let's just be together. Uh, today, we don't have so much of that. We have more of like wear their heart on their sleeves, wear their emotions, you know, on their sleeves. Uh, so it's tougher now. And there's, and there's also, don't forget Facebook and all that, uh, where people put all their emotions uh, there. Uh, so it's, uh, it's getting tougher. But what I must say is that uh, values, values, values. Uh, time-tested values, uh, values of God, even though you don't know God, uh, can still save uh, your marriage. Respect, love. Uh, you don't need to be a Christian to know that. Um, patience, kindness, uh, forgiveness. You don't really have to be a Christian. Uh, yeah, being a Christian helps you do it because you get strength from the Holy Spirit to be able to do some of these things. Um, you know, but there is a certain level of forgiveness that people know how to forgive. Maybe not so deep, maybe they forgive but not forget. And still hold it inside. But okay, I forgive you. Lah. All right, I'll work with you. Lah. But a lot of it is tolerate. And I must say that tolerance I have gone through many generations. And it's worked for many generations. Maybe today harder, but still can work. So my uh, answer to your question is that you can still have a successful marriage without knowing God why? Because there are God values that you live by and some people are more disciplined than others. Uh, and others are more, you know, emotional. Uh, and, and they go up with their emotions, right? Uh, so they go like, if I don't like you, I'll tell you I don't like you, you know? Uh, and there you go. Respect out the window, honour out the window and stuff like that. Uh, well, but, Pastor, how yeah. do I know this God? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, again, if you're talking about God values, it can be learned anywhere. It can be learned from Sunday school, it can be learned from a Christian missionary school, it can learn uh, internet, okay? Uh, but uh, finally, how you get to know not just the, the, the God values, but the God of the values uh, is, uh, well, I'll just tell you straight out. Uh, his name is Jesus uh, and he died for your sins. Uh, he died for your broken marriage. Uh, he died for your hopelessness. Uh, he died for your sins. He died for your pride. He died for your insecurities. He died for your lack of confidence. He died for uh, your desire to want divorce because you, knew, you know no other way. You're at your wit's end. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He is here to make your marriage work. He is here to make the ugly beautiful. 
uh, 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 to make the past uh, you know, covered by his blood so that he can give you a future. His name is Jesus. And if you uh, don't know him, I encourage you to know him today. He is just one prayer away uh, from coming into your heart and being your Lord, your Savior, your strength, uh, and uh, answer to your broken marriage. He, he will become your healer, your mighty deliverer, uh, your hope, and your only chance. Again, his name is Jesus, and this is the prayer that we want to pray. We want to say, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord, be my Savior, be my best friend, be my hope, be my strength. Lord Jesus, I look to you. I put my trust and my hope in you. Come into my life. Save me. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be the very center of my marriage. Be the very center of my family. I'm going to put my trust in you from this day onwards. I'm going to call on your name every time I'm in trouble. Jesus, help me. Jesus, be my hope. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, that's a very simple prayer. In fact, you know, we could even put that prayer again on the screen for you, uh, you know, uh, and, and from today onwards, pray to Him. Look to Him. Trust in Him. Put your faith in Him. And this God will not only give you values, He will give you strength and power uh, to be able to be more than an overcomer. All right, welcome back. And this is our final segment for uh, episode two of season two. Last segment is Chinspiration of the Week. And this is taken from Chinspirations volume six. Um, and I have this to say. Uh, honor is not based on what we have or how we feel, but on who the person is in our lives. I'll repeat it. Honor, honor is really, really important, guys. Uh, is one of the secrets of success. Really, really. I mean, if you are having doors closed in your face, if you are having, you know, uh, seasons of poverty and pain, and you're wondering what happened, why? You know, I've given my tithes, uh, I've gone to church every Sunday, uh, I'm serving on the worship team, blah, blah, blah. And you go like, what's going on? Why? Now, uh, I have a, actually a checklist. No? I have a checklist and it's called 21 Truths. And if, if you've never gotten your hand on that book, uh, is a book here? Uh, 21 Truths. Um, uh, if you've never gotten your hand on that book, uh, it's a good book because it's like a checklist. And I find that whenever I'm prospering uh, and I look at a checklist and, and it's because, you know, God has taught me to check off this list. Uh, thank you so much, Stephen. All right. So it's 21 basic truths and thoughts for victorious living. 21 basic truths and thoughts for victorious living. Okay, this is how the book looks like. Uh, and uh, not a very thick book, a very thin book. And it's just for my life. Uh, I believe I'm blessed and I believe that God has been very, very good to me and I've tasted all kinds of good things beyond what I deserve. Uh, and I just put down this book because I wanted people to also experience breakthroughs in their lives. And one of the important breakthroughs or the secret to breakthrough is honor. And listen to me. A lot of you out there will say, yeah, Pastor, I know that honoring my parents, honoring my elders, uh, honoring people older than me, honoring you know, my boss, uh, you know, authorities in my life. Uh, I know that's, that's important. Uh, I know that uh, that is good. But then you come up with all kinds of excuses why you can't, why you shouldn't. And sometimes it's like, you, you don't know, Pastor, you know, uh, my dad never left me anything. Uh, my dad made it really difficult because he lost his job, he lost his money gambling, and uh, I had to struggle going to university. Uh, Pastor, you don't know, my mom is like this. She's a real uh, hard person to live with. And, you know, I, 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 I now have got money and I put her to live with someone else. I, I, or I, I, I rented her apartment so that she can be far away from me. Pastor, if you only knew my mom, if you only knew my dad, if you only knew my boss, you know, um, yeah, he might be the authority in my life, in, in, in my workplace, but he's such an such a uncaring boss, blah, 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 blah. So the Lord taught me something. He says, Kenneth, I never put a condition to honour. For example, honour your father and your mother and you will have long life, okay? 
you all know that scripture. Does it say, honour your father or your mother if they are kind to you? If they left you an inheritance? If they left you a nice house, a nice car? Honour your father and mother if they uh, hug you every morning? No, friends. There is no condition. There is just honour them. Oh, but your mother left you when you were one year old, uh, Pastor Kenneth. She's still my mom. Honour her. If I see her out there in the supermarket, you know, I've not, I've not met my mom for years now, years. The last time I saw her uh, was when I went to Singapore to study. I've not seen her since. I can't even find her. She's not on Facebook, etc. But if I do see her, I will go up and hug her. And I will say, you know, thank you for giving birth to me. Yes, she was not there for me. But there is no condition to honour. So that's what I said. Honour is not based on what we have or don't have. And honour is not based on how we feel. I really am angry. You know, that's why David was so blessed. Because he knew how to honour Saul. Because Saul was an authority in his life. And was Saul a good man? Not to David. Did Saul want uh, David killed? Yes. So again, his honour is not based on what you have. It's not based on how you feel. It's the person. It's who the person is in our lives. Now, if that person is a father, he already deserves to be honoured. If the person is a mother, already deserves to be honoured. If the person is your pastor, already deserves to be honoured. If the person is your elder, already deserves to be honoured. If the person is an elder in your life, an older, maybe grandparents, already deserve to be honoured. Yeah, but my grandmother never cooked my favourite meal. Not, it never says in the Bible that she has to do anything for you. Just by the fact that she is or he is, and I repeat it again, it's based on who the person is in our lives. Learn that and I tell you what, God will be on your side. God will fight for you. God will honour you. God will supply and bless you beyond your wildest imag imagination, okay? So please don't put your own condition to honour. Honour just because he is that person in your life, alright? And look at David's life. Look at how he honoured Saul. Do you know I've been reading about David the last two days? Let me tell you about the story before I close. The first guy that came to David to say that Saul died, David asked, how did he die? Now remember, David didn't take it as good news though. Although everybody thought that Saul was David's arch enemy and if I tell uh, David that Saul has died, David should rejoice and call for a party, right? No, no, no. This is not David's kind of heart because he was a man after God's own heart. So really, he knew God's heart. And so although he heard that his arch enemy had died, he did not rejoice. He did not party. He was sad, so sad that he and the people mourn for Saul and Jonathan for seven days. Mourn. Fasted. And you know what he did to the man who told him the news? Because when David said, how did he die? The man actually said, he chanced upon Saul and Saul was already leaning on a spear, half dead. And Saul said to the young man, kill me. And the young man uh, and a Malachite took the sword and killed Saul and thinking that he brought good news to David and David told one of his young men by the side, he says, this man wasn't fearful that he would raise up his sword and kill Saul. Even though Saul asked for it, uh, please kill me and he thought he did Saul a favour and he thought that he did David a favour and he was killed for it. His, uh, David turned to one of his men, he said, with his own mouth, he confessed that he killed God's anointed. Kill him now. And then another man came. And uh, not, not, not just another man, uh, two men came after killing Ishbosheth. I think it was Ishbosheth. And Ishbosheth was the son to Saul, and he was king. Not a very nice king, not a very good king. And the two men thought they were doing King David a favor by killing uh, uh, Saul's son. Ishbosheth, and came with the news. And David said to the two men, you thought you were bringing me good news, right? 
you thought I would re rejoice and reward you, right? This is not how it works. You were daring enough to kill an innocent man, the son of a king. And he said, I will do the same to you as I did to the other man. You see, David kept his heart honoring. I'm telling you why. Because David feared the Lord. David was a man after God's own heart. And we believe that with God, uh, honor is very important. That's why God says, if you honor me, God says, if you honor me, I will honor you. Uh, so honor is a very important key to success. Uh, you might not even like your father-in-law, honor him anyway. You might not like your mother-in-law, honor her anyway. Because when you do that, you're doing unto the Lord. Not, you, don't have, you don't have to do it for them. Do it for God. So with that, I want to say thank you, a big thank you for you know, participating and tuning in in today's Chin Up show. My name is Kenneth Chin and I'm really glad on behalf of my team and I to have had uh, been with you for this past one plus hours. Uh, and uh, please, you know, give us a like, put a comment and share this with all your friends and family members. We pray that you've been blessed. Till the next time, take care.